The following video was completed in March of 2022, almost seven months ago. Publication has been held back following my findings in that video. And it was done in the interest of being supportive and to give the UK importer the time and ability to take a look at the gun to rectify any issues and get back to me with a potentially more sorted item. Apart from the initial telephone conversations with them and after giving them full access to my findings and video and the return of the gun to them for inspection and any alterations before publication. They have since claimed that they have rectified the issue by fitting an aftermarket part on the existing models and all new ones coming in will have different barrels. I was then promised sorted guns will be sent to me for further review. But nothing has been forthcoming in spite of me chasing them on several occasions. What follows is the original video which is purely my opinion on the sub 12 foot pound version that was in my possession at the time. The FAC power versions may be different. Should I receive anything from them at a later date, I am more than happy to review that either independently or as a comparison to the gun in the video you're about to see. Now I'm pretty sure there are a load of people out there who are waiting eagerly for a review of this week's gun, certainly here in the UK. The RAW HM 1000X. Well, I haven't got one. I've got two. and welcome to AAR on Air and this week I have a brace of Theobans. Sorry, did I say that out loud? I meant RAW HM1000 Xs. RAW stands for Rapid Air Weapons. So why Theoban? Well, Theoban was an English company and was settled in the heart of Cambridgeshire and became known for its rapid rifles that had a revolutionary seven round magazine that would allow you to shoot all seven pellets downrange as fast as you could pull the bolt back. The Theoban Rapid 7. Amazing! Well, it was back in the day. Well, time stands still for no one, and the company finished up across the pond in Murica, becoming raw, and is now owned by Air Force. So, a long way from the original company in Cambridge, Nonetheless, I'm sure Air Force would love to have all those reminiscing individuals part with their hard-earned readies and invest their £2,200 in this HM1000X. Or you could have the tactical style for the lower price of a smidge under £2,000. So is it worth that high price tag? Time to take a closer look. The two offerings I have are the laminate in 177 and the tactical style in 0.22, which is called the chassis, or should I say chassis. The laminate version is one of five different colours that are available, including reds, blues, black, camo and tan. I must say the colouring on this one is really very nice, but whilst most companies are moving towards ergonomic shapes and ultra comfortable curvaceous stocks this resembles a piece of heavy 3x2 solid timber in an attempt to replicate the old Theoban. It must be said there are no sharp edges and the finish is every bit as good as a Minelli but with a bit of an agricultural feel to it. It is 880 millimeters long which isn't overly long at all but this doesn't come supplied with a silencer or moderator for your couple of grand plus and the barrel well it isn't shrouded either it is however loud it's loud very loud and we'll need a silencer fitting adding to the overall length and overall cost. 
dropped onto the scales, it was exactly 3.7 kilograms, which is around 8.2 pounds, unscoped and unsilenced, etc. And whilst this is on the heavier side, in use, it feels heavier than that, entering into the hat sand territory, really. The air bottle on the front holds 480 cc's filled to a maximum 230 bar to be fired through the onboard regulator to help keep this efficient and consistent to back up Raw's ultimate in long range precision claim. Although I suspect this is more aimed at the higher power versions rather than the severely restricted sub 12 foot pound versions that can be had without a ticket here in Blighty. If, however, you can convince your firearms officer or you live in a less restricted country, then you have a full range of calibres available to you, including 177, 22, 25, 30 and 357, ranging from sub 12 foot pounds to 130 foot pounds. Whilst we're looking at stats, the barrel on this one is carbon wrapped, choked, 400 millimetres or 15 and three quarter inches long, and with that 480 cc bottle out front, should be good for up to 400 shots in the lower power levels, according to Raw which can reduce down to around 50-60 shots in the higher power levels. The barrels on the larger power versions are unchoked to allow the use of slugs as well. Blimey, that's a lot of information. I haven't even started the walk around yet. From the front then, the end of that carbon wrapped barrel is a standard half inch UNF thread to fit a silencer. Best make it a big one if you don't want to alert the whole neighbourhood because this, as I've already said, is loud. Below this is the Air Force carbon bottle that feeds the Theoban regulator. No second gauge though for the regulator. The air gauge is to the rear of the bottle along with the straight Foster fitting filler with removable dust cap. Below this is that pretty, beautiful coloured and finished, but slab-sided laminate stock, which really does feel like you're holding a piece of 3B2. There's no other explanation. This does have an M-lock system running underneath that flows into the forming of a basic trigger guard, a la target rifle design. Then you come to the adjustable match grade trigger and safety. Now I've used a lot of guns in my time with all types of safeties and I feel this is an area that needs to be right. I've used this for a while and I must add a personal opinion here. I feel the trigger and the trigger safety is rather close and cluttered. The safety is very close to the trigger itself, and whilst I appreciate it is designed in part to cover the trigger, to take it off safe, your finger is touching the trigger, and anyone with big sausage fingers, as my kids used to call them, this could potentially be an issue. This is only my opinion and observation, but I feel it needs mentioning. The grip and forestock are stippled for grip and I found the slab sided stock getting in the way of a comfortable thumb position. Again, personal thing maybe. Moving back there is a very nice adjustable cheek piece which can be altered up and down with the hex key on the right hand side of the ambidextrous stock. The rubberized butt pad is also adjustable, helping you find that sweet spot for your scope alignment. Up to the top then, and we come to the rather high block with Picatinny rail running along the top. This is also offset by 20 MAO to give you that longer range targetability. The side lever on this rifle is truly an engineering work of art 
The feel is silky smooth and you never get tired of it. The magazine on this 177 is a 17 round item and it is a turn the cover anti-clockwise and slot in each pellet, one first, keep your finger underneath, stop it falling through, turn it round and then just keep filling them as you go along. Once you've got it all loaded up, pull back on that beautifully smooth side action, slide your magazine in from the left, push forward, you're loaded and ready to go. The magazines come in 17 rounds in 177, 12 in 2.2, 12 in 2.5, 9 in 3.0 and 7 shots in 357 caliber. Now you do only get one magazine with a gun. You do get a foster fitting and a few O-rings, but no bag or hard case, no silencer, and you're going to need to budget for these items potentially. Time to get this over the chronograph to check out the power levels. Now the blurb makes a claim, which can often be a dangerous thing to do or can cement the excellence of your product. Raw state. Every HM1000X features a Lothal Walther barrel that, after being fitted to the receiver, is tested to ensure accuracy along with the trigger and power output which are all hand-tested and tuned before your gun leaves the factory. Big words. So, getting it over the chronograph. In 8.44 grain pellets, over the chrono, it saw 772 feet per second, which is 11.17 foot-pounds or 15.15 joules. So not quite as I was expecting from such a handmade item. But not content with that, I dropped in some 10.34 grain pellets and it saw 11.84 foot-pounds or 16.05 joules. Now that's more like it. Now that had me thinking. So I dropped in some heavyweight monsters at 13.43 redesigns and tried it again. Just in case it was going to fire over the 12, it saw 567 feet per second, which is 9.49 foot-pounds or 12.87 joules. So the regulator does control it nicely. It would appear then that the 10.34s are the ammo of choice when it comes to the power output. And I would presume that is what it has been set with from the factory. Time to get a silencer and scope fitted to this and get it out on the range. 50 metres should be enough for a sub 12 foot pound version. I'm going to add the continental scope to give this a proper fighting chance. Here goes. Rapid Air HM1000X Laminate. <sighs> Say two minds on this one, I really am. I fitted um, the continental scope, beautiful. And one of the things you do have to watch, choose your scope and everything wisely, especially the wheel, to make sure that the magazine doesn't get in the way, uh, because it is quite a large magazine, 17 round magazine on this 177. So be mindful of the fact that if you're putting a side wheel on or anything, whether it's going to catch with that. It is a real slab of timber. Now, I just know some people are going to love it. I, I just, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right in the hands to me. I fitted the biggest silencer I can because otherwise I shot it once out here in the paddock and everything in the trees from <laughs> yards and yards around just scattered straight away. It was so loud. So you will need to put a silencer on the end of it. <clears throat> Zeroed in, shooting out at 50 metres. We'll see how we go. Say 177s. I'm putting the 10.34s, 10.34s I think they are, in. Uh, because that's where it's sent to produce most power. So we'll do that. Downrange. And um, yeah, one thing that I have noticed as I've been shooting this is the trigger is a beautiful, beautiful trigger. Let's, let's not get away from that. The only thing it is, coming from the factory, is set quite light, which is a dream to use. But with that safety 
I don't know, it's just the trigger is so light, catch it as you're taking it off safe, I don't know. I say I've got fairly slim fingers, I'm having a tendency to use the side of the lever rather than use the front of your nail to take it off safe. Um, and yeah, it's uh, on, on a stand you don't notice the front so much, uh, it's, I can't get quite comfortable around the grip area, I'm struggling with that. Uh, but certainly the, the shots I've taken so far on the zeroing, yeah, it's, it's pretty accurate. You do notice that 20 MOA, have I got that right way around, MAO, um, adjustment on the um, Picatinny rail. The scope really it hasn't got a lot of adjustment left on it because it is designed, the whole gun is designed to shoot out at the best part of 100 yards, but in the sub-12, don't know. Let's go at 50, see how we go at that, shall we? And you do have to make sure you click that last piece in. A slight breeze, but not a lot. Heck of a lot quiet too in that silencer. I have no idea what that one was. That must have been me. Bit of an odd one. They're all starting to centre around. I got one flyer. I, it was bizarre. I, I, it must have been me. Uh, <coughs> it just shot low for some reason. Um, yeah, they're grouping really quite tight. It's out at 50 metres. I've heard people go really mad about these things, about how absolutely super, super they are. It is good. It is very good. Um, with a bit of practice, I'm sure I can get them a lot tighter. My biggest problem is I don't feel comfortable with it. That's, that's the issue, and that's part of it with, with a gun. Um, somebody with different hands, different setup, would probably absolutely adore it. it, it it's beautifully made. It is absolutely beautifully made, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I suppose the, the one thing that really bugs me on this is this stock. I, I don't like the stock at all, but beautifully, beautifully made. somebody's after me and with that <laughs> back to the studio <laughs> well once you get this zeroed in and get yourself settled down it is capable of some really tight groups over a 50 meter distance so I would imagine the higher power versions are capable enough to push out to greater distances now I've spoken at length about the laminate version and I still have the chassis version but I feel this is probably going to need a review of its own so I will be reviewing this one a little later so don't forget to hit the alarm bell to be notified. In summary then, this is a bit of an oddity to me because I'm not sure if it's aimed at pure target work, hunting or maybe a mix of both. I realise the HM stands for hunting model, but at this price and with that beautifully finished stock, I just can't see myself out and about in a wet, muddy forest or quarry. It is undoubtedly accurate with a superb side lever action, one of the best I've used to be fair. I personally don't like the stock and the grip or the weight though some people will prefer a heavier rifle undoubtedly the shot count is terrific which tells you the regulator on board is doing its job the adjustability is excellent with the stock and trigger although the two-stage trigger was beautiful straight out of the box and for me didn't need any adjustment at all i didn't care for the safety though Price-wise, 
Well, there's no getting away from the fact this isn't budget territory. Far from it. And it isn't that well kitted out in the box to help towards justifying that higher ticket price. By the time you've added a quality scope, a silencer, a bag, spare magazines, etc., then you're looking at the thick end of three grand. And there are a lot of rifles out there with this level of accuracy for a fair chunk less. It will undoubtedly have its fan base because of its historic past from decades ago. And I can see why. It will get you noticed down at the range. And it's going to be exclusive. A top Trump's winner if ever there was one. Accuracy is probably its key selling point. Though in this day and age, a lot of rifles are becoming pellet on pellet capable. And I've used quite a few recently. So it's probably going to shine more out at greater distances and in the higher power levels that will be found out in America, where this comes from. And the restrictions on power are much less. Perhaps want to pop on your FAC ticket and stretch out to those 100 metre distances. Well, I've tried to be as honest as I can with this one. And the jury is out with me. It is definitely different. Almost yearning to go back in time to the old Theoban Rapid 7 days. If you can get hold of one, try it out and let me know what you think. Hopefully you've enjoyed this week's programme. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share and click the old alarm bell. Share your thoughts across the forums and websites. Check out the merch at the AAR website. And of course, a big thank you to Vector Air for spending their hard-earned readies to get hold of this one for me to test and review for you guys. Finally, a big thank you to you guys for watching. And it just leaves me to say... Stay safe and shoot safe, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.